Funding is critical. Well, you know, while you can do some research just by sitting thinking in your room, and, and that's very important. As an experimentalist, if you don't have an experiment, then there's not much point. And if you uh, don't have any money, you don't have an experiment. So it's critical. D-Zero observed for the first time ZZ production at Tevatron and measured its cross-section. Now this is the lowest cross-section ever measured at a Hadron Collider. The operating costs are dominated by the cost of liquid helium, which has also gone up from 3.5 a, a litre to 5.40 a litre. So we've also asked for a little more money to deal with that and <coughs> ongoing. This number the whole of the money. United Kingdom's particle Very physics program basically stands up there and tries to justify its existence and uh, make the case that this is what we're doing, this is why it's important, this is why we need this amount of money. It will be make or break for some groups and for many careers as to what actually happens in, in this meeting. So it's, it's kind of annoying when people sometimes talk about um, science and academia as though it's an ivory tower because it sure as hell doesn't feel like it when you've got to stand up and justify your existence like this. Um, I first saw this on stage in Westminster when one of Andy Parker's postdocs emailed it to me while I was actually presenting the thing, which was pretty exciting at the time. Of course, things got a little less exciting later, but um, the, the, uh, the, just to point the out... The vast majority of the UK's particle physics the investment is going into the LHC. The UK pays something like, well now it pays about £80 million pounds a year to be in CERN. We're about 15% of CERN. So it's... it's what, several billion. It's cost the UK about a billion and it's cost internationally five or six billion, maybe more. I understand. Uh, we will find a Higgs boson, a candidate standard model Higgs boson, or we will falsify the standard model in the electroweak symmetry breaking sector. We will have a, we do have a massive coverage of low energy supersymmetric scenarios, possible extra dimensions, black holes, electro alternative electroweak symmetry breaking scenarios. If you really want to do stuff like understand the universe, there's no company that's going to say, okay, we'll give you this much money to understand the universe. Of course, at the higher level, we have to argue why, why should it be these tens of millions in particle physics? Why should you do particle physics in the first place? People's mood has been going up and down over the last year. There was huge excitement in the build-up to 10th of September. The first start-up of the LHC, and particles circulating in the ring for the first time, which was, was really wonderful to see. But then after a few days running, we had an accident. So then people were a bit depressed and uncertain and yet determined. So, so we'd lost the beam but we knew we'd only just you know tuned everything up and got the detector together and so we carried on with commissioning the detector using cosmic rays. So these hit, hit the rock above the detector and actually penetrate through the rock and go right the way through the middle of the of the Atlas experiment. Everyone was really pulling together to make sure that we carry on with getting the detector ready to be in the absolute best condition when, when, when the beam comes back. Being involved in, in these cutting edge activities and engaging people on fundamental problems about the world around them and the universe around us is, um, is something that has unpredictable benefits. If they were predictable, you wouldn't need to, the taxpayer wouldn't need to fund them. Right? Particle physics is not, um, not an isolated activity, it's part of a, of a quest, of a human quest, to find out what on earth is going on in the universe around us. If there were no particle physicists in the world and there was no one asking these big questions and trying to address them, then it would have a real negative impact on solving the practical problems in the end as well. I give you a very simple example. For example, no, no, a very simple example and you tell me that with what we have now we can do or not. This is the parameter you're after. This is the workshop where just two years ago with John we started thinking about the questions that eventually became the Eurostar paper. Okay, this is the since this is a really simple case, you can actually get PFT analytically. Okay. Because you know, you know that this is, you know, this is a Gaussian, the sum of two Gaussian. You could do them easily. John and I were both here. We happened to meet in the library here. 
and started discussing something and discovered we were both interested in it. Uh, but we didn't quite realize where it was going to go then. And it's only a couple of weeks after this workshop that we suddenly, re suddenly realized the potential of what we were dis we'd been discussing. Um, the theory, the theory should quantify this, this statement. It could be because the theory should quantify this You probably want to put a new trainer on here. Oh yeah, the, yeah. Okay. Well, this is you get the idea. I do, right? I do, but you know, people are finicky. That'll no, be okay. I can't think of anything. I mean, well, I think of anything obvious that we're going to get in, in trouble with. You know, like no, difficult questions. No, there might well be difficult characters there. But everyone who knows anything about Higgsness is going to be in the mix. So. Yeah. But, um, what will people be difficult about? Oh, d usually that we just haven't done it the way they yeah. do it. <laughs> well, yeah. Assuming we haven't missed anything completely obvious. Yeah, a bit of a, just a, a lack of, uh, some people need a lot of convincing. So how significant is it for the, this paper to, to make this presentation? Very important. Very important. We've already got to the point that the precision with which we're measuring cosmic ray tracks is, is really quite close to the ideal precision. We're quite pleased with how well we've been able to align the detector. We're reclosing the detector, so it's the usual thing. At each step, we have to test that nothing has got disconnected, that everything's working, and, and get the experiment into the final, the final configuration. Now the anticipation's building again for, for starting up. And, I think that people are nervous, people are excited, we're really hoping that things will go smoothly this time. We've done a very careful job and we've done all the testing, but there's always in the back of your mind, oh, what if, what if. If you just use the Acer MC for generating your WVB back, then actually you overestimate your ability to reconstruct these events, which is uh, so we, we we find actually that Herwig models it better in our case. Do you know how it compares to the next to leading order? Uh, is that sort of a, an old problem with the Tevatron? 1.5 factor or anything? Well, we, no, no, we, no. yeah, we find that it's around. It's two. Yeah, it's about two. But we also find that the signal is about 1.4. And there will be a pub note available soon for conference season. And if you're interested in more, there's loads of material in the note, basically. Thanks. OK, many thanks, Adam. We're on the cutting edge of the trigger as well as the. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> OK, yeah. Yeah, oh, well done, Adam. Was, uh, it's a question that obviously gets asked a lot. Um, that you ask yourself a lot actually um, when you see you know the world has big problems and you think why am I spending my whole time trying to find the, the origins of mass? The answer 99% of the time is it's because I'm really I find it really exciting and I want to know the answer but every now and then you step back from that and think you know that there are a lot of problems in the world about you know sustainable energy um, you know you, the, the people are sick so you've got diseases that strike people you love and you think why am I not working on trying to cure diseases and things instead. It's precisely because you don't know